Fed up warrior here. Yes, folks, I'm back. I'm back, and we're going to be in full swing of things. I just want to bring something up. I'm the Fed up warrior, not Fed warrior. And since I've been gone, there's been a certain gentleman that's been uh, ragging on me. Sadly, can't even get my name right. But we're not going to focus on him. Let's see what's been going on since uh, I last put out a video. When I last left, I brought this up. This was the very last video I put out, I'd say, close to two months now. This occurred. I'm sure everybody got it. There are a few people I know that did not. Just something to keep in mind. Facebook purged over 800 accounts. Big players, too. It's sad. You're talking the Free Thought Project. You're talking Liberty One. Nations in Distress. Cop Logic. The Liberty Principle. Cop Block. American Patriot. Press for Truth. Stranger Than Fiction. Stranger Than Fiction had over a half a million people. Half a million followers. Gone. Do you think Facebook's the only one doing this? According to these different outlets on Twitter. Right now as we're speaking. Another purge. There have been three purges. Last purge took out 10,000 accounts. 10,000 accounts, ladies and gentlemen. That was over a week ago. They keep printing out new indictments every month. 61,328. And they keep coming, ladies and gentlemen. That this, Here we go. That, well, if you don't mind, Mr. President, that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, Mr. President, it to be an as you know, Mr. President, caravan was not an invasion. It's a... It's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America. See, what I want to talk about is how not so much Acosta confronting Trump here the other day, but the element of fake news. That's a very important issue. Why is it important? It goes back to 2012, and I'm about to explain to you why what happened in 2012 and 2013 as to why this man right here is having so much trouble with the mainstream media. The mainstream media was was given the keys to the palace in 2012-2013. In my opinion, the greatest mistake in United States history. You're about to see. Hold on. Now, we're going to go back a little further, but it starts right here. The real work starts right here. It was back in July 2nd of 2013. The United States government repealed a propaganda ban. You're probably sitting there going... Wait a minute, this propaganda ban actually prevented mainstream media from lying to the public? Not really, but it did restrict them from out and out pulling the shenanigans they're pulling now. See, what people have got to start understanding, it goes back to 2012 with the National Defense Authorization Act. Now, they've been lying for many years. It, it's, their, it's their dirtiest trick, but it was in 2012 and 2013 that a major piece of legislation was nullified that opened the floodgates on mainstream media. And yes, for those of you that are fans of CNN, those of you that are fans of CNN, this is your eye opener. Wake up and wake up now. It was in 2012 that the National Defense Authorization Act was passed. And one of the things it did is legalize the use of propaganda in US public. How damning was it? I'll tell you how damning. Give me just a second. It all goes back to the Smith Month Act back in 1948. It's basic legislation for propaganda activities conducted by the U.S. Department of State, sometimes called public diplomacy. The act was first introduced by Congressman Carl E. Munt, a Republican out of South Dakota, January 1945 in the 79th Congress. It was subsequently passed by the 80th Congress and signed into law by President Harry Truman on January 27th. 1948. Let me give you some provisions to give you an idea what kind of provisions they were. There were three key restrictions on the U.S. Department of State in the Smith Month Act. The first and most well known restriction was originally a prohibition on domestic dissemination of materials intended for foreign audiences by the Department of State. The original intent was the Congress, the media, and the academia would be the filter to bring inside what the State Department said overseas. In other words, the U.S. could not put out propaganda to the foreigners. Bottom line. Number two, added to the Bloom Bill, the predecessor of what was ending up being the Smith-Monk Bill at that point in time, Representative John M. Vorey's Republican out of Ohio, 
wanted to remove the stigma of propaganda and address the principal objections to the information activities the Congress intended to authorize. These provisions remained unmanded and were the real prophylactic to address concerns the U.S. government will create Nazi-style propaganda or resurrect President Wilson's CPI-style activities. The amendment said the information activity should not only should only be conducted if needed to supplement international information dissemination of private agencies. That the State Department was not to acquire a monopoly of broadcasting or any other information medium and that the private sector leaders should be invited to review and advise the State Department in this work. Ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is simple. They had their version back passed in 1948. It took them over 64 years to update and open the floodgates on propaganda. You have to remember, this gentleman you're looking at right now is a Democrat. So was Obama. So as far as I'm concerned, maybe a law needs to be put in the works that stops this fake news barrage. Don't you think? I think it's time. I think it needs to happen. And most importantly, it needs to happen now. Because if this fake information continues to come out, somebody's bound to get hurt. Oh wait, somebody has. This man. Everybody forgot about this man. How did the NDAA hurt him? I'll tell you how. When this book came out, it made mention of Chris Kyle going into a bar and confronting an older gentleman who was a Navy SEAL. According to the book, they identified the individual as Jesse Ventura. That's fine and dandy, but there's one problem with that narrative. See, Jesse Ventura's on blood thinners. He was even on blood thinners then. When you're on blood thinners, according to the book, Chris Kyle struck Jesse Ventura. For one, Jesse Ventura wasn't even there. He was in another part of the country altogether. But oh, it gets better. See, it has been proven. If he was to be struck while he was taking blood thinners, guess what? He would have had a nice, nasty bruise. Just the smallest hard thump. He even talked to Chris Kyle to get it taken out of the book. This man endured a lot, including a lawsuit. He initially won. When it was appealed, he lost the appeal. Do you understand now, ladies and gentlemen? There is a such thing as the freedom of the press. But with that comes a responsibility to print the truth. You have to print the truth. I don't care who you are. Hopefully once Donald Trump gets things fixed, we can work on fixing the press. You can like, dislike, comment, Definitely comment. I want to I want to hear your thoughts on this, folks. Share and subscribe if you like. And if you do subscribe, push the button notification. That way you get notices when you get uh, videos in the future. And as always, folks, thank you for watching.